In the test kitchen, we like using a nonstick pan for cooking delicate foods like fish and eggs. But we know that traditional nonstick skillets coated with Teflon and similar materials have faced allegations of being harmful to cooks and the environment, especially when they're heated above 500 degrees. Ceramic nonstick skillets are marketed as safer, healthier alternatives. Now, unfortunately, we've never found ceramic skillets that were very good. Nearly all the ones we've tested in the past couldn't cleanly release food, even when they were brand new. And as soon as we started cooking in them, even the slightly better ceramic surfaces went right downhill way too fast. But we wanted to give these pans another shot. We had two questions. Is there a new ceramic nonstick skillet out there that's both truly nonstick and stays that way? And if so, how does it compare to our winning regular nonstick skillet? We bought seven ceramic nonstick skillets, all 12 inches, priced from about $20 to about $80, and we gave them a workout. Our first test involved a lot of eggs. We fried eggs one after another in each skillet, dry, with no fat. And we didn't stop until eggs began to stick or when we'd fried 50 eggs without sticking, whichever came first. This test tells you how well the slickness of the pan is holding up. And we did this at the beginning and at the end of testing, so we could see if the coatings deteriorated after being used. And in between, we made some recipes we typically cook in a nonstick skillet, including beef and broccoli stir fry, frittata with peppers and onions, and pan fried sole. Along with giving the pan some practical use, these tests also helped us rate each pan as a pan. We looked at its capacity, browning ability, comfort, and maneuverability. We also recruited three more testers who were completely unfamiliar with these pans to saute peas and give us their opinions. And finally, to test the structural durability of the skillets, we cut them with a knife, we heated them and plunged them into ice water, and finally we whacked them three times on a hard surface. Now, before we get into results, I want to take a second to talk about the difference between ceramic and regular nonstick. Both are coatings applied to metal pans. In regular nonstick, manufacturers use a substance called polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTFE. This makes a super strong, fairly flexible, and very slippery coating. PTFE is inert, which means chemically inactive, so eating a flake of it isn't going to hurt you, but it can degrade and release dangerous fumes when it's heated above 500 degrees, and that's always going to be a limitation of traditional nonstick pans. Another concern, until about 2015, PTFE was processed with the help of a compound called perfluorooctanoic acid, or PFOA, which was discovered to be dangerous to the environment and to human health. That's been phased out, and nobody uses it anymore. Our former recommended pan by ScanPan did not use PFOA, but it did use PTFE, so we did not include it this time. Now, ceramic nonstick doesn't use PFOA, and instead of PTFE, the pans are spray coated with a liquid material that, when heated, hardens to a slick ceramic surface. There's no risk of it releasing toxic fumes, even at high temperatures. But here's the problem. Ceramic surfaces are brittle. So ceramic coatings are more likely to develop tiny microscopic surface cracks during normal use. It's a problem that quickly goes from bad to worse. The rougher that cooking surface becomes, the more likely food is to stick to it. And then scrubbing off the stuck on food degrades the ceramic more. But while all ceramic nonstick coatings have those same challenges, they're not all made alike. Ceramic is a broad family of materials, so their formulation can vary significantly, as well as the thickness of the coating, how the layers are applied, and how long the coatings cure. So given that they're not all alike, how do these new pans do? Sadly, most were still not nonstick over the long term. Remember that in our first dry egg test, we set the benchmark of 50 eggs? Of our seven pans, one of these pans released just 28 eggs, then stuck. The other six skillets passed, but when we repeated the dry egg test at the end, four more pans failed. One of those choked after just nine eggs. Others quit between 15 and 32 eggs. Now, since slickness is the only reason you buy a nonstick pan, we automatically disqualified any pan that failed the egg tests. And that left just two of the seven pans. That's a big contrast to our most recent review of traditional nonstick skillets, where all 10 pans passed both egg tests. Fortunately, we liked cooking with the two top performing ceramic pans. Both of them had wide interior cooking surfaces, nine and a half and 10 inches across, so there was plenty of room to brown beef or stir fry and sear fish fillets. We did notice that food was cooking more quickly than it might in a regular nonstick skillet, but everything we cooked turned out well, and nothing stuck to the pan's cooking surfaces. 
Now, one of the two had fairly steep sides that got in our way, but the walls of the other were more gently sloped, and that let us easily flip or remove food. Both had handles that were comfortable to grab, but both pans felt a little heavier than ideal. That steep-sided pan is oven safe to 400 degrees, while our preferred pan with the sloped walls is oven safe to 600 degrees. So we have some possibilities in the ceramic world, but how do the best one compare to our favorite regular nonstick skillet from OXO? We bought new copies of each and we did five side-by-side -side cooking tests, pancakes, fried eggs, caramelized onions, more beef and broccoli stir-fry, and pan-seared salmon. We took care to use the same burner and heat level and strictly stuck to the cook times listed in the recipes. Pancakes and eggs both cook at a fairly low heat and they were hard to tell apart. But recipes that called for higher heat levels told a really clear story. The ceramic pan ran hotter, foods cooked faster, and they were a little more prone to sticking. Some of the caramelized onions came out a little too dark. Sauce in our stir fry reduced a little bit more and made dark sticky patches on the skillet surface. Salmon skin stuck. Cleanup was still pretty easy. We just had a quick soak in hot water and that was enough to loosen any bits of sauce or caramelized sugars. But the experience was clearly different than using our traditional skillet, where food never stuck to the pan and it was a breeze to clean. And we looked closer. Both pans are made of aluminum and they have similar weight and thickness, so we focused on the coatings. Ceramic conducts heat, which means that skillets coated with it heat up faster and stay hot. By contrast, PTFE is a type of plastic and it acts as a thermal insulator. It slows the transmission of heat to the food. So our takeaway, when you're cooking with ceramic pans, it's really important to pay attention. You might need to lower the heat or take it off the heat a little sooner than called for in a recipe. Food might stick slightly and the pan may take a little bit more effort to clean and you better be gentle when you're cleaning it. If you want to avoid PTFE, you'll have to make that trade-off of ease of use. But if you love the super slick, ultra-reliable results provided by our favorite traditional nonstick skillet, and you're careful never to heat it while it's empty or let it go over 500 degrees, you're probably going to want to keep using that. While ceramic skillets have improved dramatically since we first tested them several years ago, they still can't quite match the performance of PTFE skillets. But if you're interested in the potential safety benefits of a ceramic coating and you're okay with making adjustments as you cook, we can recommend two good pans. Our favorite is the Green Pan Valencia Pro Hard Anodized Nonstick Fry Pan. It's shaped well with plenty of flat cooking surface so food has room to brown evenly instead of crowding and steaming. Its gently sloped walls help keep food in but don't interfere with a spatula or spoon. Its handle is comfortable and the pan is oven safe up to 600 degrees. It's even broiler safe. And the pan's base contains some copper and iron, so it's induction compatible. At about half the price of our winner, the Kyocera ceramic coated 12 inch nonstick fry pan is our best buy. We're not as fond of the design with its steeper sides, and it's a little heavier, which makes it a little harder to use. But its ceramic nonstick surface stayed slick and durable. And one final note although we're thrilled to find ceramic nonstick pans that work better than we've ever found before, we really can't fully vouch for their long term durability. We'll be stocking them in the test kitchen and updating our findings on our website. Now for more information on these pans and all the testing we did, check out the links below. And please ask your questions in the comments section and be sure to subscribe.